much you miss him, the crocodile hunter. I never can forget Steve Irwin, because every year when I go home at the holidays and visit my family, it's always like an episode of the crocodile hunter. It's always like, shh. <laughs> now, kids, don't try this at home. The only reason I can do this is because of my many years of experience dealing with other scary creatures like the Egyptian cobra and the Nile crocodile and the cast of swamp pawn stars, but I digress. I'm about to get up close and personal with a creature even scarier than that, the Florida Southern Baptist. <laughs> now, kids, the only reason why I can get this place is because they can't see me coming. You see, the Florida Southern Baptist is a distant cousin of the African ostrich. Now, you know how the African ostrich likes to bury his head in the sand, right, kids? Right? Right, kids? Right? Well, the Florida Southern Baptist has a similar weird habit. They like to keep their heads buried way the fuck up their ass. <laughs> you guys remember, speaking of which, speaking of keeping your head up your ass, remember your Sunday school teacher? How many of you guys remember Sunday school? Do you guys remember Sunday school? Anybody else? Remember the six stories they used to teach us as kids in Sunday school? I think this had to be where Stephen King got his early inspiration for his novels. Can you imagine, by the way, what it must have been like for Stephen King and his kids? His kids? Can you imagine being a kid of Stephen King's at bedtime? All right, kids. Tonight, Daddy's going to read you the first chapter of his new novel, Pet Cemetery. And the kid goes, Pet Cemetery. We heard, but don't worry, see, that's when all the fun begins. <laughs> he comes back as a demon kitty and possesses your soul, and you get to go to hell forever. Isn't that fucking awesome? No. <laughs> I'd like to do my impersonation of Stephen King at the Oscars for you, real quick, okay? Yes, I'd like to thank, uh, of course, all my, my, my publisher and all my readers, of course, but most of all, I'd like to thank my Sunday school teacher for fucking me up with your <laughs> such inspirational six stories from the Bible. Seriously, let me just talk to you for a second about one of the earliest stories we were taught as kids. How many of you guys remember the story of Abraham and Isaac? You guys remember that? Remember, it doesn't get any sicker than that. Abraham hears the voice of God commanding him to what? Kill his own son as a human sacrifice to God. Now, you thought that human sacrifices were just cold devil worship shit? Did you forget they're the bedrock foundation of Judeo-Christian beliefs? First with Abraham and Isaac that you're taught as a child, and then later on with Jesus and the crucifixion, all to satisfy what? Let's have our own little Sunday school class here. Oh, what was that to satisfy? God's bloodlust. This is what we're teaching to fucking children. What the fuck? And I got to thinking about it and I went, oh, wait a second. I think I know why, because it's kind of like the tobacco industry. You know how the tobacco industry had to get kids early? They knew this, right? To get them on the cigarettes? I think the institution of religion knew if you try to teach this kind of shit to a fully grown adult, they'd laugh you out of the room for the 5150 whack job you came around, right? But here, let me ask you. If we're going to teach a child those kind of stories, what I ask is, shouldn't we teach them the correct version of the shit? Is that too much to ask? Shouldn't we teach a child the correct version of this shit? Let me tell you something. That story of Abraham and Isaac was mistranslated. That's all it is. The problem was, it wasn't translated properly. Would you guys like to hear the correct version of the story? Okay, we're going to do our own little Sunday school class here. What happened? And it's really the ending. The ending actually has a funny ending. And don't you need a little comedy relief at the end of a Breaking Bad story like that? Don't you? So here we go. Abraham does, it's true, hear the voice of God commanding him to sacrifice his son. That's true. And so he invites little Isaac to go for a walk. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. So he comes in, and see, Isaac had no idea. What, first of all, what little boy doesn't want to go for a walk with his dad? The one person he trusts more than anybody else in the whole world to fucking keep his ass safe, right? But little Isaac had no clue what was coming. Had he had any clue at all what his father was going to do, do you think he would have gone with him? He'd have been like, no thanks, Dad. Knock yourself out. Go ahead on up there by yourself. I'm going to stay here and play World of Jewish Warcraft. You go on up to the top of the mountain and fuck a sheep or whatever it is you do up there. I'm going to stay here. But no, Abraham resorts to trickery in the story to get Isaac to go with him. So they're walking up. They get to the top of the mountain. And what happens? Abraham grabs little Isaac. This is true in the story. He binds him with cord. Do you guys remember this? He binds him with cord, puts him on the altar. Can you imagine how terrorized little Isaac must have been? And I just have a question for the Jews. Did they really have this much?
much trouble getting their kids to clean their room and feed the fucking camels. But this is what they have to resort to. So he gets Isaac up on the uh, altars, all bound with cord, and he's about to drive this huge fucking knife into his chest. That's true, according to the story. So he raises the knife up, and guess what happens? The angel of the Lord shows up at the last fucking second. But what do you expect? These are Jewish Hollywood scriptwriters. This is how they always wanted to tell a tale. Maximum comedy relief, right? But then the angel shows up at the last second, grabs him, and says, What the fuck are you doing, Abraham? Abraham's pissed. Abraham says, What the shit, sir? He says, I distinctly heard the voice of God commanding me to sacrifice my son. And the angel said, No, you didn't. You didn't hear him tell you to sacrifice him, you deaf old 